back in. And then what trading, and, and I'll boil it down to this, and, and I'm, I'm trying to wrap this up very quickly because I'm right at half an hour, and I, I don't want to keep you pinned to your desk forever. Whenever the market shows a potential sign for a trade, what you've got to do is get to the point where you have an acceptable level of risk, whatever that may be. Because if you think about it, if the market was selling here, so traders were thinking sell, and the market moves up, then they were thinking buy, then they're thinking sell again, now they're thinking buy, what does that mean? Well, what that means is if you let the market get out of all of this junk in here, all of this consolidation and sideways action, and it starts moving up, to me, this is a much more, a, a much more low-risk trade for just about anybody. Why? Well, because if the market gets back into here, what does that mean? What that means is that all of the people who are buying in this area have stopped buying if the market starts to push down. And it actually means that new sellers are coming in and more sell orders are coming in. So if you're buying after the market has already moved up off of this level and pushed up here, you now have a very low risk entry. Now sometimes the market will just get into a runaway mode, but you know what? That's very rare. Most of the time, the market is going to come back, retest the level, and then move off. How do I know this? Because that's how large syndicate traders have to operate. Remember, I'm trying to condense for you four CDs into uh, a half an hour or so. Syndicate traders, institutional traders, they want to make sure that there, there's no what they call latent selling. So they're going to move price back into the prior area. Because if the sellers are there, you know what? They are going to hit it as soon as price starts moving down. As soon as they see buying dry up, they're going to start selling. And unless more buyers come in, price is not going to go back up. Listen, syndicate traders, institutional traders are not stupid. They want to buy when other people are buying. Yes, they will build a position, but the end result of that position <clears throat> has got to be profits. And they know the only way that they can make profits is if they buy down here, somebody has to buy here, somebody has to buy here, somebody has to buy here, 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 on and on and on. Somebody else needs to come behind them to buy. They know that better than anyone. And unless those people are in there buying, they don't, it doesn't matter how much money they have and how much money they have to put to work down here, you could put in $20 billion into the pound down here and you could still not move the market. The market could pop up and then immediately come right back down. Because if there's nobody else to buy, this $20, $20 billion is just sitting in the market. Nothing more than that. So, what you've got to do is you've got to get in the habit of observing what's going on in the marketplace. Don't be afraid to look for multiple signs. You've got a Fibonacci retracement. You've got a logical point on the chart. You've got a candlestick formation. So you've got one, two, three, and you have a logical reason to get into a trade. And then it's all about probabilities. It's simply the numbers. In the worst case scenario, if you were trading on a 2 to 1 risk reward ratio and you lost 50% of the time, I know everybody wants to win all the time, but you're not. If you win 50% of the time at a 2 to 1, you have a high likelihood of making money. If you can stay disciplined. So, that's it in a nutshell. It's a very advanced concept. There's a lot to this, a whole lot to this. So, um, you know, don't worry if some of this if some of this went over your head, um, because like I said, I'm trying to condense four CDs down into just 35, 40 minutes or so. But that's it for this week, uh, as far as um, as far as the comments. Um, and hopefully, uh, I won't mention his name, but hopefully you, you can see why I didn't answer this question in an email. I'd be typing for half the day. So. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. There's a lot there. Like I said, you're going to want to review this a couple of times. Uh, let me pause for a minute, and then I'll get into uh, the analysis for next week. 
Okay, so here we are. Let's talk about uh, the upcoming week. Now, just uh, taking on the concepts that we just got done with, uh, let's, let's apply them to what we're seeing for the current market. You see here that the, the prior week was selling off. The market, and it's uncanny how alike these two are. The market sold off, came into this week, traded down uh, during Monday, traded up Wednesday, Thursday, started to peak out. Thursday afternoon and Friday sold off, and it's ending up here. So Friday actually sold off a little bit lower and then bounced up slightly. So the marketplace traded down, up, and then down again, and then slightly up. So if you were looking at an intraday chart, it would look something like this. What are we seeing? Possibly a double bottom late in the week. But we're also seeing a couple of other things. The selling turned into buying, but then look what happened here. The sellers...